As more and more countries surround the walls of the pump with the plug, Bangladesh has also seen a small trickle of electric vehicle. Now, while automakers are happy to market their EVs, the system to keep them running, the charging structure, remains largely in the shadows. So much so that many people in Bangladesh do not realize that not only it's now possible to live with an EV, it's actually quite convenient thanks to multiple charging networks and their support apps and system. To show you guys that it's not only possible to live with an EV, but conveniently so, we have teamed up with Crack Platoon, currently Bangladesh's largest charging network, and Mercedes Benz Bangladesh, who has loaned us this EQE 53 AMG to show you guys how to charge your car in Bangladesh. Now, to show the process step by step, we have bought in Shumit Karmakar from Plant Bangladesh. Bangladesh. Shumit, for the audience, please briefly explain what exactly is Crack Platoon. Hi, this is Shumit Karmakar, Executive Director of Crack Platoon Charging Solution Limited and the brief history of Arsen. So, I would like to say we are a EV charging network company in Bangladesh and we are expanding all over Bangladesh to charge the EV and provide the network service and also everything, the transaction to the EV network servicing, everything, you name it, we'll do it for you. All right, that's great. Now, to start the charging process, we need the plug. Now, this charging station itself doesn't come with a bolt-in plug. Thankfully, Mercedes and every other company that's partnered with Black Platoon provide their own charging system, which in this case, the plug. First, you plug it in with the charger, which thanks to a spring-loaded latch could be a bit tricky if you're doing it alone. Then you take the other end, drag it toward the charging station, which is in this case, a almost 90 something kilowatt which nets you 400 kilometers of range and it's charged pop this and then get rid of the Weber cover and push it in now that we set up the hardware connection time to set up a digital link so show me how do we do that for the digital link we have a dedicated charge easy app and you can find it on both on play store or app store every platform you can use our app and it's so easier that there are some steps like you open the app register your number and your car and after that you find a charger on our app and come here scan this code and just plug it in simple that's great but considering there is only one charger here is it first come first serve basis or can i book it in my app or do a certain system there we have multiple chargers in single station, but for this case, I'm considering there here is a single charger on this station. So you can pre-book in, or you just come here and check. Both options are okay. All right, that's great. Now, the problem here is I plugged it in, I'm charging. How do I pay you? Do I have to call you or how does it work? The process itself is much more efficient than you expected because we have integrated 36 banks and all the MFS like Bikash, Nogod and you name it. Every payment gateway is supported in our ChargeZ app and you just recharge the credit and just plug it in and rest is on the app and you can see every data, the charge, charging bill and you'll get a receipt which will be in detail that's how things work excellent now the car's hooked in we got our answers about the money and the charging schedule now to actually start the charging show me please let the way so we have come to the charging station at chef's table and this is a 22 kilowatt ac charger and the first thing we do is to scan the charger this specific qr code right there's a qr code and this is the charger id if your camera doesn't work, we have covered you. You just put the charger ID and it will be connected. So One minute. Is that supposed to be a reference to Batman? Kind of. So after that, I have found this charger, charger idle. So I'll set it up. I'll push the start charging. And there are three modes of charging. Like you can charge in basis of time, units 
are kilowatts and amount so uh, i'm fixing this with a amount like i'm choosing to charge this for 400 taka okay let me see it's preparing for charging so how much kilowatt we are getting it for that money almost 20 kilowatt plus i'm not exact but the tariff is now 18.97 taka per kilowatt so you do the math okay and this is a 20 kilowatt hour charger 22 kilowatts okay because uh, we have seen 22 kilowatt chargers are standard for ac charging but we also have the dc chargers so DC chargers are kind of fast charger, super fast charging network and Mercedes supports fast charging and all the all our partners support the DC charging facility. This is the basic charger for the commercial charging and after that we move to the DC charger. That's a whole new segment. All right, now that the charger is rolling, and uh, we have around an hour of nothing else to do. We're gonna do what everyone does in courtside. We're gonna have our lunch and then we're gonna come back and we're gonna see how much this car has been charged and more importantly, how much money we spent on it. Let's go. All right, we are here inside Chef Table. We have our food and now while we eat, I have a few questions for Shomik. So Shomik, of all the things you could have named your company, why Crack Battle? It was the first Formula SA team a proper Formula SA team which participated in Formula SA competition in Formula Student Japan. What is SA? SA. SA stands for Society of Automotive Engineers. So it's kind of, you can say, Formula One for the students. And it's a very famous international event and it's the biggest design competition for the engineering students. It has venues in G Germany, Japan, UK, USA, Australia, and every every other space. So we went for our former Formula Student Japan 2017, and from then we started working on EVs. And after that, we found out the problem that EVs need chargers. Without chargers, we can't implement EVs. So to develop a EV base, we started installing charging stations. That's how our company formed. Interesting. About your app, uh, we did pay digitally, but how secure is the system? Are we fine with it or is it susceptible cyber attack or what? The system is fully secured. To prevent your data, we have AES-256 and TLS 1.2 plus. To protect cyber threats, we have IDS and ILS protection. And after that, we have data audits like GDPR and ISO 27001 standard data protection systems. Cyber attack aside, uh, how stable is the system? Uh, have you had any crashes? What happens if, it, if I crash when, you know, I'm charging the car? Does it stop charging? Does it keep charging me, you, you know, man monetary wise, how it works. So I'll explain the crashing part in two stages, the digital crash, the app crash, and the voltage crash or over voltage. What should we do when this happens? So the, for the first part, if our app crashes, so the charging continuously going on. And for emergency, if we have to stop it, we have a RFID card that we can scan on the charger and it just disconnects. This is a safety feature also. We provide a RFID cards for the customers. Two RFID cards for a single car. So if someone goes to the charger, he'll he have to keep it as a backup. Like the Metrorail card or other bank cards. It's just on the same size of a credit card and you have to just scan that on our charger. That's so how big is Crack Pattern Charging Network right now? And what kind of solutions do you provide? Do you have DC, DC, what kind of things? To be exact, we have 24 chargers online and more are coming on the way. 
most of them are installed, but they are going to be online on our app soon. How safe are these chargers? I mean, after all, we are talking about very heavy electricity here. Do people have a chance to get barbecued? I hope not, but you tell me. The chargers are complied with CE standard, and the charger passes the various tests for TUV. You know that. So it's a common standard for all the electrical compliances, and we have CE, TUV, and other high voltage requirements for digital communications like IEC 609472, IEC 609472, IEC 610091 with the relevant parts and IEC 6089H series or IEC 60269 series for the lightning charger comply with IEC 62305. So what's track in future? Uh, do you guys have any plans to just to keep it inside Bangladesh, expand all over the Bangladesh? Do you plan to go abroad as well? So talking of expansion, we definitely want a Bangladeshi brand to rule over the world. That is our goal. So, and talking of EV, EVs have much more potential in other countries also. So we're looking for that. And we are definitely optimistic about installing more chargers in Bangladesh and beyond Bangladesh also. You guys are already putting in a lot of money. You guys are already made over around 40 chargers. The question is, do you think it's worth it? Do you think EV actually has a future in Bangladesh? So when someone buys the EV, he has to leave the charging hassles for on us. We'll do the heavy lifting for you. It includes the EV charging network management, charging stations, apps, your transactions, and your data protection. Everything will handle that. And if you need personalized chargers or extra chargers for your car, we can do it for you also. In your home, your office, workspace, everything. And talking of charging stations, Charging stations are not like the conventional petrol pumps because petrol pumps need a bigger space to accommodate the, all the machineries. But charging station requires a small space. It's just like a wall socket. You can carry it on your cars. So you'll get a low power charging adapter with your car as a complementary, but you can buy faster chargers like 22 kilowatt if your car supports we can provide it and it's comparatively cheaper than you are thinking so we already have a few charged avs in the market some of them have been sold but anyone who's thinking about buying an av in bangladesh what do you think they should look out for and what do you have to say for them what advice you have for them i mean to be frank evs have taken over the world evs are ruling the world and most of the major manufacturers has discontinued their ICE cars. So that's why we think EVs have much more potential for the customers and the environment also, because uh, we are running out of fossil fuels. That's why we have to think differently and we have to save the environment also, also make the cars affordable. That's how EV comes in. You can use a luxury car and have a very cheap per kilometer fuel cost, equivalent to our kilowatts. That's very cheap. So why people won't buy EVs? And the major concern for the EVs are charging station or range anxiety. So we are here to cover that. So we believe EVs gonna take over the space of Injects. All right, our foods are done, our bellies are full. Now we're gonna go and check on the Mercedes bench and see how full that is. Wait a minute, let me show you something. You can check this from here. The charging app shows one hour and one second has been charged, 19.35 kilowatt charge is accumulated on the car, and the tariff is 367.15. Taka. So all the informations you can track from the app. You don't need to be physically there. 
like you have a fleet of cars so you can manage all the cars from our app so for an hour of charging which cost us 367 taka we got how many kilometers of range that's almost 100 kilometers of range so it's amazing for an AC 22 kilowatt charging but if you went for a DC charging session it will be much more than that three times more for a 60 kilowatt chargers so 300 kilometers of charge and you can say that if you charge in the DC charging station you'll get 300 kilometers of range and for single minute of charge you'll get five kilometers of range let's boil it down to the basic things for 100 kilometer range we had to use petrol for 1600 taka while we are using our EV and it's costing us only 367 taka 15 paisa for this 100 kilometer range. That's the comparison 1600 taka versus the 367 taka 15 paisa. So breaking it down even further, it takes 16 taka for a petrol car to cover one kilometer in Bangladesh. On the other hand, uh, EV takes around what, uh, six, four taka per liter? That's almost 12 taka saving on per kilometer alone. Considering mo that's a that's massive. Considering most cars do what, 40 kilometer per every day, 40 kilometer of travel. So you're saving almost a thousand taka every day. That's massive. And you're also saving the environment. That's priceless. True. So, considering most petrol car, not hybrid, that runs on the Dhaka, does 8 kilometers per liter if they're lucky. How much money did the EV owner saved? If we compare EVs directly with petrol cars, EV cars will cost you for per kilometer 3 to 5 Dhaka, depending on models. And some models has even less for per kilometer cost. But while using a petrol car, we get 15 Dhaka per kilometer cost. So it's a huge save. That is indeed a big saving. That's a good point for EVs, besides uh, being it more carbon neutral and environmentally friendly. All right, let's go and let's check out the market person. All right, that's it for today about how to charge your EV in Bangladesh. If you have any comments or questions, leave them down below. We're happy to answer them. For now, we'll see you on the next video. Goodbye.